Good morning. I'm out in the forest. Going to do some foraging. I, I found something I wanted to share with you guys. I did a story about the Pacific gooseberry a few months ago, and I shared what the flowers look like. And now I'm out here and it's ripe and ready for picking. So I wanted to share that with you guys. How many of you guys forage? How many of you know that God gave us everything that we need around where we live? It's amazing. Everything, our medicine and our food. And I've been meaning to bring you guys out with me. This morning, we're going to do it. Good morning, Regina. <laughs> Good to see you. Yep, I brought you out foraging with me this morning. How's everybody doing? Good morning, Evelyn, Amanda. Good to see you guys. A few months ago, I shared with you guys about the gooseberry plant. And there's different breeds of the gooseberry plant that grow all across our country. And I happen to be in um, California where the prickly gooseberry, another name is currant, grows here. And I shared with you guys what the plant looked like a few months ago when it was flowering. And now I'm going to show you what it looks like when we're ready to pick it. Uh, the gooseberry currant is um, nutritious and medicinal um, and it's high in pectin. So you can actually make jams and jellies out of it, syrups out of it. How many of you have foraged? That would be interesting to know. Who is into foraging? And it's something you guys that I've been talking a lot about, especially on my lives, because I want you all to know the importance of learning this in these times that we're in right now. It's very, very important. And you know, I own the book Foraging for California. Everybody should buy the foraging book that is for the state you live in. That is a very important thing to get at this time. I think my book was $10 and it has been a wealth of knowledge for me. I go out, I try to learn one plant every time I go out. When I find the plant, I write notes of where I've located it, uh, what it was like, what, you know, you want to put the date stamp on it so you know when you found it. And, and then I, I pick a few, I bring them home, I dry them, I use them for medicine and food. You always want to leave some behind for others and for wildlife. Anyway, okay, so let me flip the camera so I can show you guys uh, the, the ripe, ready for picking gooseberry. Current is another name for it. Okay, so let's see. Let me flip the camera around. Look. They're really easy to see the color. They're really easy to spot because you can see the berries. And I'm going to show you that it's much more like a grape than a berry. So <clears throat> they're very um, plump. Now this is the difference between, um, in California, our wild gooseberries are very prickly. Let me pull it in close. So you wanna wear gloves. And I don't have gloves with me today just because I didn't expect to do this. I'm doing this kind of spontaneous because I'm up here babysitting my grand puppy at the cabin. And this is where I do a lot of my foraging. And um, so I decided to, to come out and check the gooseberries because I've been watching them the last few months. They grow in the elevation about four to 5,000 here in California. Okay, so they're really prickly. And this is when they're ripe. You can pick them when they're green. And like a lot of fruit, you just set them out and they will ripe, They will turn red and ripen. But look how beautiful. The leaves are also edible. And you can put them in your salads or um, just eat them while you're out in the woods. How fun, huh, you guys? I don't know who was on or who saw my story three months ago when this was all in, it was all flowers. And the flowers resemble, if you know what bleeding heart looks like, 
they, they are beautiful. They're long, just like the berry is. And the bright red. And the forest was literally, when I found this, uh, was just stunning with all of this green and red. And now, of course, it's stunning because we have these berries that are ripe and ready to eat. Um, these are gooseberries. The other name for them are currant. And they're high in pectin, so you can make jellies out of them. When you cook them, when you, when you boil these down, all of these spikes become soft and edible. So you don't need to skin this berry. 